Hey everyone, it's Easter weekend, so perhaps you're watching this before heading out to a church service, or in most cases, the pub. Just be sure to look out for Russian spies though when you're out, because if you see someone lying in the street in the gutter outside Weatherspoons, then it could in fact be a former Russian businessman or outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin who's been gassed. I'm sure that nerve gas is actually a pretty good excuse if you return home and you're met with questions about why it took you six hours to go to the shops, or why you're now stumbling around like Shane McGowan attempting to play hopscotch. I digress. Anyway, the past week saw Russia and the West expelling each other's diplomats, 150 or so, from each side. Um, there was even a mildly amusing incident when New Zealand tried to export all the spies and diplomats and send them home to off Moscow, but there weren't any in the country at the time. It's a small place, mind, and more of a red wine drinking sort of a place at that. Not too popular with Russians, I imagine. Anyway, as for Mr Skripal, he remains in a critical but stable condition, and his daughter Yulia is said to be improving, but Theresa May is pretty concerned that someone, in this case a doctor, is using the word stable to refer to something other than Brexit for once. This week, what marked the one-year countdown to Brexit, Mrs May did a little tour around the UK making all sorts of generic speeches and platitudes and invoking all the sparkle and excitement of a car going in for its annual inspection. If you're watching the news and accidentally reset your TV and had to sit through 10 minutes of it retuning all the channel listings, then you probably didn't miss a lot. And certainly you wouldn't have missed anything about Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party's ongoing anti-Semitism row. You know, it's not as if the BBC or the like want to run too many stories about their messiah in the week leading up to Easter. Finally, talking about not reporting the news, one of the things that the press seems to be missing out on the, in the Skripal case is the link between Sergei, the man who was poisoned, and Christopher Steele, the former British spy who compiled the dossier alleging that Trump colluded with Russia. You know, something to look up now if you've got a spare half an hour to waste on YouTube and have some tinfoil to hand with which to construct a hat for yourself. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.